cheese is one of the most versatile ingredients in the culinary world, used in everything from gooey grilled cheese sandwiches to silky cheese sauces and bubbling pizzas. But if you've ever tried melting different types of cheese, you've probably noticed that some turn into a smooth, creamy liquid, while others stay firm or become a clumpy mess. In this video, we'll break down the reasons why some cheeses melt better than others, how their structure affects their melting properties, and what makes certain cheeses ideal for different types of dishes, right here on History of Simple Things. To understand why some cheeses melt well while others don't, we need to look at their fundamental structure. Cheese is made up of three main components, water, fat, and proteins. The balance of these components determines how a cheese behaves when exposed to heat. When cheese is heated, the first thing that happens is the fat begins to liquefy, which contributes to the creamy texture of well-melting cheeses. At the same time, proteins in the cheese start breaking apart, allowing the cheese to flow into a gooey consistency. However, if the proteins are too tightly bonded, the cheese won't melt smoothly. Instead, it may just soften or become rubbery. Another crucial factor is moisture content. Cheeses with high moisture, such as mozzarella and fontina, tend to melt well because the water helps the cheese become more fluid as it heats. On the other hand, hard, aged cheeses like Parmesan and Romano have very little moisture, making them more resistant to melting. Instead of becoming smooth and creamy, they tend to dry out and become grainy or crispy when heated. Another key reason why some cheeses melt better than others is their acidity level, measured by pH. The pH of cheese affects how its proteins interact under heat. Cheeses with a pH range of typically around 5.1 to 5.5, like Gouda, Monterey Jack, and Young Cheddar, melt the best. At this acidity level, the protein structure is just loose enough to break down under heat, allowing the cheese to flow smoothly. If the pH is too low, like in feta or goat cheese, the proteins are tightly packed and the cheese will not melt well. It might just soften slightly but retain its shape. Conversely, if the pH is too high, the proteins become rigid and may separate rather than form a smooth melt. The aging process of cheese significantly influences how well it melts. Fresh cheeses like ricotta, queso fresco, and paneer don't melt because they have a high moisture content but lack the necessary protein structure to create a smooth melt. Instead of turning gooey, they simply get warm and retain their shape. On the other hand, young to moderately aged cheeses, such as mozzarella, gouda, and Monterey Jack, melt well because they have enough moisture and the right protein balance. These cheeses have a flexible protein network that allows them to stretch and flow when heated. Aged cheeses like Parmesan, Asiago, and extra sharp cheddar behave differently because aging causes proteins to form stronger bonds. As cheese ages, its moisture content decreases and the proteins become more rigid, making it less likely to melt smoothly. Instead, aged cheeses are best suited for grating over dishes, where they can crisp up or add a nutty, savory flavor rather than melt into a creamy texture. Fat plays a crucial role in the melting ability of cheese. High-fat cheeses like Brie, Fontina, and Gouda tend to melt smoothly because the fat helps lubricate the proteins, allowing them to break apart easily. The more fat a cheese has, the richer and creamier it becomes when heated. In contrast, low-fat cheeses such as part-skim mozzarella or reduced-fat cheddar don't melt as well. Without enough fat to help separate the protein strands, the cheese can become rubbery or stringy 
rather than smooth and creamy. This is why full-fat versions of cheeses are usually recommended when making dishes that require good melting properties. One of the most iconic melting cheeses is mozzarella, known for its signature stretchiness in dishes like pizza and lasagna. The reason mozzarella stretches so well has to do with how its proteins are arranged. During the cheesemaking process, mozzarella undergoes a process called pasta filata, where the curds are kneaded and stretched in hot water. This aligns the proteins in a way that allows the cheese to form long, stretchy strands when melted. Other cheeses like provolone and Oaxaca cheese also undergo this process, which is why they share similar stretchy properties. In contrast, cheeses that don't go through the pasta filata process, such as cheddar or Swiss, they may melt well but won't stretch in the same way. Their proteins are not aligned to create long strands, so they tend to flow rather than pull apart in strings. For different types of dishes, certain cheeses are better suited based on their melting properties. Cheddar, Monterey Jack, Gouda, and Fontina are great for creating gooey textures, making them perfect for dishes like mac and cheese, grilled cheese sandwiches, and cheese dips. When stretchiness is key, mozzarella, provolone, and Oaxaca cheeses excel, making them the top choice for pizza, lasagna, and quesadillas. For creamy sauces, cheeses like Gruyere, Swiss, and Emmental melt smoothly and add a rich, nutty flavor, making them ideal for cheese fondue, soups, and French onion soup. While Parmesan, Asiago, and Romano don't melt well, they are fantastic for adding a crispy, savory crust to dishes like pasta, roasted vegetables, or baked casseroles. Finally, cheeses like halloumi, feta, and paneer don't melt at all but are perfect for grilling or frying, holding their shape even under heat. Cheese melting is not just about temperature. It's a complex interaction of moisture, fat, protein structure, and acidity. Understanding these factors can help you choose the right cheese for your dishes, ensuring you get the perfect texture every time. Whether you want a creamy cheese sauce, a stretchy pizza topping, or a crispy cheese crust, knowing how different cheeses melt will help you make the best culinary choices. So next time you're in the kitchen, experiment with different cheeses and see how their melting properties transform your cooking. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.